multiple friends. Today I would like to share a video on attacking chess. We will take a look at four examples, two of which are going to be similar in style. In all of the positions, I will ask you to stop the video and find a winning continuation for the bottom side. Let's take a look at the first position. Here it is white to play and win. I would like you to stop the video and try to think what would you play here if you were playing with the white color. And so most of the people follow this process. At first they think that the position is uh, very easy to solve. We're just playing queen takes h7, after king moves to f7, we can play queen takes g7, which is a mistake. And after king e8, they're thinking that, hey, it's just queen e7 checkmate. But wait a minute, there is bishop that is covering the e7 square. And it doesn't look like we can find a mate here. For example, if we do something like bishop to g6, king of blacks can simply escape to safety. And because black is a lot of material up and white does not have a checkmate, black is absolutely winning in this position. Then they go back to the starting position and they're saying themselves that queen takes h7 is an incorrect move. After which they start looking at all sorts of alternatives. For example, pawn takes g7, pawn to f7, bishop takes h7, queen takes e6. And if they're lucky, they will find that those moves are not winning and come back to the original move queen h7. Maybe then they will find a winning move on the second move in that line and it would solve the puzzle. Otherwise, they probably would go for something like queen e6 or bishop h7 in the game or in the puzzles and fail at that puzzle. So why does that happen? Because after we play queen h7 and king f7 and we make a mistake, we're thinking that the whole line is incorrect. We have to remind ourselves that perhaps you made a mistake on move 2, on move 3, on move 4 in the line. And here white is absolutely winning. He just needs to find a mate in 2 with the move queen to g6, which is not the most natural move. I think it's very rare to consider that first. We force our king to the g8 square, after which we can finally find a checkmate on g7. Let's solve another puzzle where a same mistaken pattern could be um, applied if you don't remind yourself of uh, maybe you made a mistake on the move 2 on move 3 in the line. This is another position where it's why to play and win. So you can pause the video and see if you can find the solution here. And so normally most of the people consider bishop takes g7 here absolutely first. So bishop takes g7 and if king takes g7 then we have this common pattern of how we can checkmate. We would start with queen e5, which kind of forces the king to go to h6. Then we have a very typical queen h5, followed by rook f7, and then we have queen h7. However, this is not enough to just play the moves and say white is winning, because after bishop takes g7, they have rook takes g7. A lot of the people don't consider the most natural move, which is queen to f8 which is a mistake. And then after rook g8, they fail to find a solution here because there is no solution. What they do next is they go back to the starting position and they say bishop g7 is probably not winning and they start considering all sorts of alternatives. So we have to remind ourselves that maybe the mistake we made was on move two or three. And so we play bishop takes g7, rook g7, and we create the so-called list of candidate moves again which means that maybe queen f8 is not the only move, but we also have queen b8. No one would consider queen b8 on move uh, one because that is simply not the most natural option going away from our target, the black's king. And the difference is that after queen b8 and rook g8, now we have queen e5 check. And so our rook will be able to land on f8, rook g7, and rook f8 and there is a checkmate so i see similarities in these two exercises and i hope that you can learn 
an idea of how you can change your thinking process a little bit to make those attacking tactics or maybe all sort of other tactics as well more successful. Let's take a look at um, a few completely different positions. Here it is why to play and win again. When I say win, I usually mean not only to achieve a checkmate, but win something like a piece to obtain a winning material advantage. So you can pause the video and try to solve this one as well. And so most of the time when we hear it's to play and win, people are thinking that it has to be very forcing. When I look at this position, or when I hear my students speak about this position, uh, one of the things they want to force is the white queen coming to g7. That would make us win immediately. However, uh, there is no way to bring that queen there. That pawn on its own is not only good if we get the queen to the g7 square, but also it doesn't allow the king easily to escape through the left side because the pawn is covering the square on e7. And so the solution to this puzzle requires you to play a slow move. There is nothing fast all the time in the puzzles. It's not like queen h7, check, check, mate, or capture, capture, check, that is followed by material gains. Sometimes is as subtle as simply bishop to e2 and bishop to d3, where we're building this battery on this diagonal, and there is simply no defense against that. So one attempt that black could play is the move d5, trying to deflect our queen. However, after we take, take and take with the rook, bishop to d3 followed by queen h7 is simply inevitable, and the blessed black can do is start giving up material, which gives white nevertheless a winning position. Why do people fail at puzzles like that? Well, first of all, they might not be good at maneuvering the pieces, so it's a virtue of strategy and perhaps this doesn't strike them as pattern recognition. However, a lot of the students are saying that they thought this is simply too slow. And my recommendation when you start the puzzle is simply ask what is black threatening in this position? And if you say, well, black is not threatening anything in this position, then why do you think that you have to play fast? If you look at this position and black cannot capture anything that is free in your position, check you, or the threats that they will be creating are far less severe than our mating threat, then you can take your time. The threats of opponents allow you to know the speed of the attack uh, that you can develop. So next time you're starting any kind of puzzle, ask yourself, what is the opponent threatening? If it's a checkmate, you gotta be fast. If it's a queen, you better counterattack with the queen capture threat or a checkmate. But if they have no threats, take your time and play a slow move if that wins the game for you. And let's take a look at another one, which is a very important quality or idea when we're attacking especially. It's black to play and win. Again, win might mean a checkmate. Win might mean also simply getting a material advantage. So we can pause the video and try to crack this one. And so the last very important idea that I want to share in the in this video, since it's on attacking, is simply considering always at all the moves inside the line to bring more attacking resources. So, for example, here, it is not enough to win the game just to use these four pieces. The correct line starts with rook takes f1, after which rook takes f1 is forced, and now most of the people, they're trying to win just with these pieces. So you can consider moves like queen g2, queen takes uh, rook, maybe f2, maybe bringing the knight somehow, none of that wins. So always keep uh, reminding yourself that maybe you can get the pieces off the uh, back rows and bring more attacking resources. And bishop h6 here wins because we are attempting to deflect the queen. Queen cannot take because there is simply mate on g2. So, for example, here, what uh, white can attempt is queen to f2, running away from the attack of the bishop, after which simply bishop e3 wins the queen. Once again, they cannot take because there is queen g2. And in this position, if they were to play queen c2, we simply have a checkmate in two. We play bishop e3. And now, for instance, if uh, rook f2, there is queen g2. Rook cannot take because of the pin. 
And of course, if king h1, then we have queen f1. These lines are easy. I think that the most important move, which is hard to see, is this bishop h6, deflecting the queen and realizing that queen cannot run away from the second rank. So I hope these uh, three very important ideas can boost your uh, level, but only they will if you keep consciously reminding yourself of these ideas. After you keep reminding yourself of what is opponent's threat, and maybe I was uh, wrong to say that the whole line is wrong, as I might have made a mistake in the middle of the line. So the full line shouldn't be refuted. And bringing attacking resources all the time. After you consciously remind yourself of these things, at some point this becomes subconscious and it just becomes internalized. Part of your chest, you're thinking about that without realizing the effort. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please subscribe to my chess channel. You can also consider hiring me as your personal online chess coach. My contacts are on the right. That's my full-time job for the last 10 amazing years. And I hope to see you in the next video. Thank you.